Well, welcome, welcome, welcome to Conversation with the Judges. I'm Wanda Atkins, creator of the French Panorama of the French Touch 2023. And here we have in our third part of this series, Tracy. Tracy, how are you? Beautiful. How are you today? <laughs> Running like usual. <laughs> there you go. There you go. There you go. I wanted to, uh, ahead of time, thank you very much for joining this adventure and being a judge on the panel for this year's edition. We really do appreciate it. Thank you so much. <laughs> of course, thanks for having me. I was very honored and excited to be invited, so. Cool, cool. Yeah, it, the choices of judges is really people who are very uh, unique in what they do. And so, you know, I've been following you for a bit of time. So Mix, tell us about you. What, what, what do you do exactly? What do I do exactly? <laughs> That's a good question. Uh, I'm a musician. And I've been a musician since I was just a tiny little boy. I've been playing drums since I was three. And um, I got into steel pan actually late in the game. I wasn't, the first time I went to Panorama, that's when I kind of said, okay, I'm a pan player now. It wasn't until 95 when I was 25 years old. So um, so I was a little late to the game, but it's, uh, as a lot of people know, the pan jumbie. Took, took me over and I've been doing it ever since and luckily been making a living at it ever since. So um, so I've been doing the pan thing for a little over 25 years now. And, uh, but my kind of claim to fame, if that's what you want to call it, is pan rocks. So I grew up a rock and roll musician and uh, found out that uh, you can play rock and roll on steel pan. And it turned out to be a really cool thing. I'm 10 years into that. and. Uh, yeah, so that's kind of, in a nutshell, what I do. I'm like the Pan Rocks guy, but I do a lot of other stuff as well. So. Okay, wow, um, Pan, wow, rock. That's really interesting, wow. Okay. Yeah, we do, I do a lot of guest artists over here in the States. I've done it in different parts of the world as well, but the mm -hmm. fun thing is, is that uh, it turns on a lot of kids here in the States to the steel pan art form through a music that they're familiar with. Okay. And uh, then the bigger, the better. So a lot of times I might be at a festival and we might have five or six bands that do their little uh, performances and stuff. And then we'll bring everyone together for like a mosque band. And then before you know it, you have 150, 200 kids playing. And then with rock and roll music, the kind of that I do other than the Rush stuff isn't that complicated. It's not okay. like Panorama. Mm -hmm. So we can do Led Zeppelin's Cashmere or The Who's Baba O'Reilly and these really big epic songs that us in the Western world really know mm -hmm. through Steel Pan. And it sounds really amazing. The audiences love it cause they're familiar with the music. Mm -hmm. And then in turn, I get to turn them on to a Steel Pan art form, uh, educate them a little bit about Trinidad and Tobago. And then if you like this, go check out what they're doing in Trinidad and Tobago, check out Liam Teague, all these different, you know, players and stuff, the Boogsy Sharps of the world, the Devon Stewart's of the world. So I kind of see myself as kind of like a, a gatekeeper to open the floodgates for people if I can get some people interested in the art form. So, um, and then I get to work with a lot of kids and turn them on the music as well, or at least keep them in school after school and uh, keep them out of trouble for a little while. <laughs> so, what's so. the reaction when they, they play pan? Here in the States, it's, um, it's, it's ever evolving. Uh, like 20 years ago, there was literally the scene wasn't available, it was a lot smaller. It was more traditional. Um, you had the guest artists like, you know, Andy Norell over here in the States, as you guys know, yeah. was kind of like, if it wasn't for him, none of us over here will, you know, he introduced us to the art form by doing what he was doing. Mm -hmm. And um, and then you had, you know, the Ray Holman's professor was coming up. I think in the eighties, Boogsy was coming up as a guest artist, but that was about it. A couple others maybe, but um, Robert Greenwich. So it's really evolved with like the younger, band directors who have, and a lot of these band directors here in um, the United States kind of inherit steel drum bands. Like they might've gone up and a lot of them might not know a lot about steel pans. I've worked with a lot of steel band directors that might've been trumpet players or trombone players. And uh, so they have all these pockets of steel bands throughout the country. And then they can have somebody like myself or Liam or anybody come in and kind of help not build the program, but at least kind of give them a direction. But with what I do, if they have someone like Andy come in with the Calypso jazz thing or Liam coming in doing the Liam thing, then, or Andre coming in, then I can come in and just do, give them a different experience 
which is nice for some band directors. So um, that's kind of how I fit into the equation. And then again, um, middle schools and high schools, I work at a little bit more than universities because the rock music isn't quite as complicated. And um, and then the kids love playing it. And then of course they're like, okay, we want to learn something more difficult. We want something more challenging. Then we can do that. And then if they want to get more challenging, I'm like, well, this is all I have. You guys get, you know, Andre White to come in or Duvon to come in and, and, and they'll take you down that road. So ah, okay. that's kind of how it's like all in these days. Yeah, that's it. That's it. But with the rock music that we're doing over here, we get a lot of people in the audience, which has been a struggle, you know, to kind of turn people on to the art form here in the States. Mm -hmm. um, but if they know that their kids are there and and then the parents, of course, might be my age, they're listening to the music they grew up on. So everything's really relatable and recognized to them. So it's kind of like, that's that's kind of how it just turned into a thing, and and I never knew it would. So it's been it's a I'm more surprised than anybody that it's taken off over here. Well, you know, it's it's been a minute, you know, 25 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a, a long journey. It's a long journey, but that's usually how these things work. You know, it's uh sometimes I don't think people realize it. it's not just overnight success. It's really you know the work that's been done in advance. You know. Uh, little by little, you know, and I think uh, it's that journey that's really exciting to to get to this point. It is. And it is a constant journey. There was a few years ago where I was like, OK, something's going to hit. I was in L.A. and I had all these rock stars attached to my my work and all that kind of thing. We did a big concert with Mark Wood from Transavian Orchestra last year, which was the biggest thing I'd ever did. And then you just have to deal with the ebb and flow and um, and then just keep, try keep trying to grow it. And now I'm just trying to be a little bit more international with it. Mm -hmm. And now that we're on the other side of COVID, the conversations are being had again because everything's shut down. I was international up to COVID. And then, of course, that kind of gnawed everything. And then um, Mia, Yuko, and I did the Pan and Unity, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. we did the big band. We had 700 players from around the world play a Bootsy arrangement. And that kind of helped um, kind of keep a lot of us pan players throughout the world in touch with each other and now that we can start traveling again we can have conversations on trying to do something in person in person which is beautiful <laughs> which would be great so great <laughs> yeah <laughs> yes yes in person that's that's the goal is in person. right play and some music and give each other some hugs and things exactly like that. <laughs> for those vibes man definitely for those vibes <laughs> yes so uh -huh. What was it like for you to go to Trinidad for the first time? That was, okay, that would have been a 95. And it was literally um, a dream come true. Professor Kim Professor Fillmore was my favorite arranger. Pan by Storm, I always say this. Uh, that Calypso or that arrangement with the Fon Claire Steel Orchestra, to me, just sounded like a rock and roll band. And I just loved his energy and vibe. Of course, I love Jit with the Renegades and, you know, everyone else. But for some reason, I just loved his music. And I had the privilege of meeting him at a workshop with Ellie Manette in West Virginia. Ellie Manette used to have his summer workshops. And um, I had met Ellie before, kind of before I was even playing Pan. And I just went to the workshop to size myself up. I've been teaching myself how to play for like a year. And I just wanted to see if I could do it. Hmm. So I went to the workshop and I had a great time. I met Professor was there. He was one of the uh, guest artists. And then he invited a couple of us the next year. It was like, is anybody wants to come down and play panorama in trinidad you know you're invited and we were just like oh. i'm in <laughs> and uh so he we lined up i played with potential symphony when he was up in uh barataria like for the first three years in a row okay and i played with some other bands as well but that was kind of like my home base and just to go down to play his music was a dream come true and then to see if i could do it i didn't know i'm self-taught to this day i still don't know how to read music everything's by ear i just wanted to see if i could do it Mm -hmm. And then, of course, as everybody knows, if you go play Panorama, there's nothing like it. And yeah. then you just hook. So you go back every year, every year. I'm getting ready to go down in a couple of weeks to play <laughs> this year. Um, I haven't done that since 2015. And mm -hmm. um, but uh, it was. I would say musically and sonically overload in the most amazing way. Wow. And uh just being inside a steel band, as everybody knows, there's just nothing like it. And then the vibe in Trinidad and everybody that had welcomed me there. Mm -hmm. So it's been my home away from home for 25 years. So okay. I've been down there twice in the last two months. So. <laughs> Ooh, lucky, yes. lucky bunny. Yes. <laughs> lucky bunny. And 
a week and a half, I go down again. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, yeah. Who are you playing with this year? Or is phase that two? Uh, phase two, phase maybe a, a medium sized man, but um, I'm gonna hang out with Boogsy and mm -hmm. you know, as long as there's a space, he said there was. But I know this year's the carnival of all carnivals. We yes. haven't had it in yeah. two years, so. <laughs> As long as there's space for me, I'm going a little late. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ah, you get a little pizza carnival at the same time. Yeah, yeah, just the, you know, the end of it. That's really great. Oh, wow. Trinidad. Oh, can't wait to go back. <laughs> yeah. Maybe down there. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, maybe not this year. <laughs> maybe yeah. next year. We'll see. We'll definitely see. There you go. Yeah. So being a judge in this, because it's, you know, um, the panorama, what was that like for you? It was very eye opening. Um, this was my introduction to French panorama and kind of the scene there. Of course, I knew about um, Flip Association through Andy Norell's record that he did a while back. And I've listened to that a lot and was familiar with them and um, some of the players. And uh, I think I told you um, when I was invited to do this, I've never thought of music as a competition. So I mm -hmm. never could wrap my head around how do you judge music? You either mm -hmm. like it or you don't, right? Yeah. To me. Yeah. So um, so I don't know if I'm the most qualified, but um, this panorama was really nice because there were some, it was just all walks of life playing pan to see the scene over there, to see there was a lot of joy there was all ages, there was young kids, which was beautiful to see. And then there were um, older adults. And then you had like, you know, the crack shots in the middle and some of the groups that were pretty killer. <laughs> and um, so it, it was really nice. It was, uh, you know, watched every band once, did my little thing and um, looking forward to when the results come out so I can yeah. watch everything again. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but just to like kind of get a feel of, you know, the bands over there and what um, you guys were doing mm -hmm. and uh, just the enthusiasm, and especially with some of the younger kids that were just, yes. you know, because we don't really have that, at least where I'm at. I live in North Carolina, but um, unless you're in Brooklyn or somewhere like that, you know, you mm -hmm. don't really have that here in the States. Most of the pan scene here is the academia, unless oh, you're in Brooklyn okay. or in D.C. Okay. or somewhere with mm -hmm. the clips with the uh, Caribbean population. But um Yes, yeah, a little bit different than, you know, like even Japan and places like that. So yeah, but yeah. That, it was it was very, very um, beautiful to see. OK, OK. Wow. No, but thanks again for for doing it. <laughs> of course. But, uh, yeah. Uh, I think we're, when everyone sees the results, it's going to be quite interesting. And it, it's I think everyone's going to be happy with the results anyway. You Hope know. so. Uh, and uh, it's really a moment, like you said, people can share joy. They love this instrument. Everybody was really concentrated. Um, and, uh, but they, they brought it up another level compared to last year. Yeah. Well, the other thing that I really um, would like to say as well is like, like for me, I just enjoyed watching everybody. And of course mm -hmm. there were some bands that were a little bit on different levels. Like they yeah. could have all two different categories. So um, to say the first through the 10th, is in the particular order that was the hardest thing mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. because I enjoyed everybody thoroughly and mm -hmm. everybody had something beautiful to offer and um, so it's like if you're in Trinidad if you make finals night you just want to make finals so you can perform that last time for finals exactly. night where you become 10th yeah. or first yeah yeah exactly or far or me it's just at least you're on stage and it's up to someone else if they're going to judge it good mm -hmm. or not so, mm -mm -mm. Um, so yeah. that's the way it was for me Mm -hmm. okay wow <laughs> being on the other side of it in that you know that's why I always ask this question because I think it's I think it's pertinent in a sense to to know what it's like for the person who's actually doing it because right. uh, you know it's an experience it's part of the experience you know right. that's for sure oh ah, okay okay well let me see yes I want to do something a little bit different because now we know a little bit about you I'm going to try some rapid fire questions <laughs> okay, I'll try. <laughs> yeah, there's probably some kind of trap in there somewhere, but you know, you'll figure it out. You'll figure it out. So I say two words, and you choose one of the words or both, or what comes in your mind first. Okay. okay. Does that make sense? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Let me give you an example. So if I say um, uh, pancakes or waffles, toast. <laughs> okay 
You got a different mindset there. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, beach or mountains? Oh, beach. Beach. Okay, beach. Um, lion or tiger? Lion. Leo. Lion. <laughs> lion. Lion. Okay, we got lions here. Um, now this one is doubles or roti? Oh, both. <laughs> I'll be stingy on that. Aye. Um, okay, aye. Mm -hmm. Okay, both. Uh, uh, Dalpery. I'll go with the roti if I had to choose one with Dalpery. Okay. That's, we can respect that. We can respect that. And the last one is probably the hardest. <laughs> Drum, drums or bass? Oh, for me, drums, 100%. 100%. Yeah, for me, for me. Yeah. Okay. Well, you survived the rapid fire questions. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you better have to with the boat and all that, but that that's that's great. Now we know who you are. <laughs> awesome. There you go. Inside I'm a drummer who loves roti. <laughs> <laughs> who loves roti? Oh, they're Delphi. Well, you're going there soon, so you get to have some. Have yes. some on me, you know. Just oh, uh, I will. You know, doubles every morning and roti every other day, maybe. Not not the dirty doubles, but you know you can. <laughs> Oh, Cura. Airport. Gotta get them a Cura, right? Or Daybay. Go down to Daybay. Yeah, that's it. Oh, oh my goodness. Okay, well, I'm getting hungry now. <laughs> so thank you ever so much, Tracy, for this, this moment. Want. It was it was wonderful. I really do appreciate it. And uh I'm so glad that you enjoyed the experience and continue what Love you're it. doing. Continue, you know, letting people know what PAN's all about, you know, that that's great. Well, I appreciate it and the kind words. And if anyone wants to find out a little bit more about what Pan Rocks is, you can just go to panrocks.com. That easy. We have videos, documentaries, the whole thing. So, um, and hopefully I can get to France at some point and hang out with you guys in person sometime. Yeah. We that gotta would be get you over here. That'd be cool too. Yes, <laughs> I'm quite sure that'd be very, very cool. Okay. Very cool. Well, thanks again. And uh, I'll, we'll keep in touch anyway, you know, okay. <laughs> afterwards. Thanks, Lonnie. Okay. All right. Peace. All right. Bye now. Thank you very much for watching the conversation with the judges. And next, get ready for the French Panorama 2023. Go to our YouTube channel and subscribe so you find out when the link drops. We're counting on you. Get ready. See you soon. Take care. <laughs>